Hey, family. Thank you for joining the Bali's Journey to Ghana. You guys, if this is your first time here with us on our channel, Aquaba, we're so happy to have you. If the, you're returning, thank you guys so much for coming back. We truly, truly appreciate you. So, you guys, we have been getting um, a, a lot of phone calls and just having conversations. Uh, we know people are still preparing to move, um, not just to Ghana, to Tanzania, to the Gambia, like we're having all kinds of conversations um, with people about their move and their building abroad, right? And so my question to them is, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? Like, what have you seriously done to prepare um, to not only move abroad, but to build your home uh, when you get there? And so we've had a lot of lengthy conversations and I've kind of shared some of the things um, that Landon and I did to prepare and some of the things that, uh, what our experience has been thus far some of the things that um, we didn't know going in and some of the things that you know we learned and that, that type of thing. And so I wanted to uh, come on and make this video today to kind of help answer some of those questions. And then you never know who's clicking around to look for this type of information. So I wanted to have some of this information out there. I know there's a lot of great information out there, but I just kind of want to add my two cents. And so you guys, I have a whole couple pages here of things that I, I want to specifically mention in this video. So if I'm looking down a lot, it's because I'm reading my notes, right? And so one of the things that um, I always ask people and, and something that we had to work out was, what is our budget going to look like for building our home? And so Landon and I had never built a home before. We were in the States. Um, we purchased a home that was that was already built so you know we had never built a home before it and so what we did is we we started to kind of do our research online on YouTube and look at a couple of contractors and got some ideas at, um, about what it might cost <laughs> might cost to build a home that we wanted here in Ghana and so um, that's kind of how we came up with our budget but even in that you guys I tell you um, that wasn't enough um, to prepare us because we just didn't think about certain things we just didn't think about like for instance so like once you get your land right uh once you get your land uh like the borehole now we just we just didn't think about budgeting for the borehole all we thought about was the structure piece of the house and so i think it's not that we didn't know we needed one it's just that it's not one of those things that we thought about okay let's let's write this down let's get an idea of what you know you you need for your borehole one thing that we did is that although we did have a budget, we, we budgeted a little bit more so that we can have some wiggle room. But you guys really want to know what your budget is for your house. So, I mean, you very well maybe can afford to spend $300,000 on a house, but you may not want to spend all that money. So it's important to have a budget, right? Uh, stick to that budget as much as you can because <laughs> I'm telling you, people will do suggestive selling. Y'all yeah, know what suggestive selling is? So if you've ever worked in sales and retail or um, fast food, where you go, for instance, to the, and they say, would you, would you like fries? Would you, would you like a, a large fries? Yes, I would. Would you like an apple pie? That sounds good. Yes, I would. Would you like for me to make your drink larger for 50 cents? Well, yes, I would. So you guys, that's the just the selling. You will be paying for that. Don't ever assume because someone is saying, Oh, would you like lights for me to put lights up here and this and that and that that that's included it's not okay it may not be uh, you want to check but before you nod your head oh yes I do I like that I like that make sure uh, if that's actually included and they're just giving you ideas or if it's suggested selling right so be just be aware um, it's a business so you just want to make sure that um, you know what you're paying for and you and, and if it's in your budget so so just be aware of that I mean it could be a good thing and a bad thing it's a bad thing if you're not aware of it it's a good thing if you know you're aware of it and and you know people helping you to have your, your structure look nice but if it's just a selling and you're not aware of what you're paying for it, it will be a shock to you and your budget so just make sure that you understand so think about things like your borehole and what that might cost um, Think about um, if you want to have some type of uh, analysis of where water is on your land. Um, that's where they kind of come out and see where's the best place to dig to get uh, constant flowing water. 
um, that's separate from your house. That's separate from your structure. And if you're working with your contractor, depending on who your contractor is, they will let you know that these are separate things. But if you're in the States planning and you don't know yet, then I just want you to kind of be thinking about these things, right? So your borehole, right? Uh, a generator for that borehole, right? Because you'll need to be able to pump the water from the borehole into the poly tank, which is a different, um, that's the big black tube things that you guys kind of see on YouTube. That is not part of your borehole. That's, that's separate. So you got your borehole, your poly tank, and then when it's ready for them to use the water on your land, they will need uh, to be able to get that water out of there, right? So they need a generator, right? That's another fee that you may not think about. So uh, you don't, if you not, don't have a borehole on your property where you have your own water supply, then you may not need a generator. But then you need to figure in that you will be having to pay for water to be brought to the site, right? So then that's additional fee. So this, just little things like that. Then think about clearing your land, right? That's a fee to clear your land. Um, again, depending on who your contractor is, uh, he can let you know all of these things. Again, I'm giving you this information because you may not know. So clearing your land, um, ask the question, um, do I have to use a collar pillar to use, uh, clear my land or can it be cleared by hand, right? We had all of our plots, three and a half plots, cleared by hand. So with a machete, somebody went out there with a machete for a fraction of the cost. So keep that in mind. Uh, your architect, right? Are you working with the architect yet? Think about that. I will tell you, probably about a year and a half ago, we paid probably right at 8,000 CDs, which is approximately at that time, size 600 US for our architect, right? So, but just think about things like that because you'll need your architect. So, you'll need uh, your borehole, a generator if you're going to have a borehole, right? If you're not going to have either one of those, then you'll have to pay for water to be brought to your site so they can mix with the concrete and all this kind of stuff, right? So, think about those things. Also think about the land you're purchasing. It may need to have, it may be a, a little bit slow to just, just see what will have to happen to your land before they put your structure on there, right? So um, they may have to level it a little bit. Um, that's gonna cost. If they bring ladder right to the um, site and level it out, you need, I don't know how many trucks of that you'll need, but talk to your contractor. So again, just different things. Be be aware of the type of land you have, like the, the sloping of your land uh, and, and what it will take to prepare your land to start your project, okay? So, architects, um, borehole, what is it? A generator, or if you don't need one of either one of those, prepare to purchase water to be brought to your site, right? Clearing your land. Uh, will they be doing it by caterpillar or will, can they have it done by machete for a fraction of the cost? That's what you want for a fraction of the cost. It looks just as nice. Um, and they do it here all the time. It looks really good. So always think about that. All right. So then you guys think about your wall, depending on where you are, you probably want to put your wall in right away to, to provide you some security. One thing that we learned um, in our experience about our wall is that um, like the designs on the wall, like for instance, the pillar on the wall is a separate cost. It's a separate cost. So when you get your estimate uh, from your contractor on your wall, ask what is included in this estimate, right? And so you want to know if it includes everything. If you send them a picture, you want to know if everything in this picture is included in this wall. Most likely it's not, okay? But if you don't know that, that will be a shock to you, right? So ask these questions up front. If they tell you no, ask them then to please give me a complete estimate for everything, for the designs, for the pillars, for the caps on the pillars. Tell them you want a complete estimate for everything for that wall. That way you're not getting things in piecemeal because for those of us who like to stick to a budget, those types of things can uh, blow your budget uh, and frustrate you too at the same time. So um, just be very specific about things like that, right? The coping around 
your wall, right? Uh, that can be pretty expensive, I, I hear. So make sure that you understand what you're paying for and that those things are separate, right? So when you get your first little quote, it's just for putting up the wall, right? There's no bling to it. There's no nothing to it. All of that extra stuff is extra, okay? And so, and that's okay. Um, but just make sure you're aware so you're not thrown off, right? Okay, let's see here. What else I have? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So never assume that uh, pricing, never assume on pricing and what's included. Get everything itemized, all right? Because you can be having a conversation uh, with your contractor or the contractor uh, we use is really good about itemizing things, right? So, but, you know, sometimes when we talk to some of the other artisans, it, it wasn't as itemized as I should have made sure that it was. And so you want to make sure that every quote you're getting uh, when you're dealing with uh, an artisan or even your contractor, it is completely itemized because you can be having a conversation and you, you think that everybody's on the same page. And so you get your estimate and it's just kind of an umbrella estimate of what you discussed. And so by the time we're into the project or at the end of the project, you realize that what you thought you guys discussed was not included, right? So um, people will have their own recollection of what conversation you had. Even yourself, if you if that's not written down, you start to doubt like, well, did we talk about that? So, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be the one paying for it. So make sure that you have everything itemized. I mean, like every little bitty thing, even if they just have to write this, uh, this, estimate includes this 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 and this okay so just make sure right uh, it, everything from like the lighting on the walls right your security system your CCTV all of the cameras and the lights um, that go up so that's a cost to you so if you haven't thought about your security system in the in the budget for your home those are things you want to think about um, like where do you want your security? How many cameras do you want? See if you can kind of get an idea from a contractor, even if you have to just kind of call around here uh, and just kind of get an idea of, of what that might cost you. So these are these are things that take place, you guys, outside of the house before you even get on the in, before you even get on the inside of the house. You have all of these things for the outside of the house, right? So your wall the lights around the wall, right? If you want taps, like if you want to be able to tap into water along your walls, if you're gonna have a garden or animals, you wanna have great access to water, right? So all of that, right, is extra. You're thinking, oh, I just want a wall. But then you get here and you realize, I don't just want a wall, I want these caps on it, I want the coping around it, I want lights on it, I want taps, all of that's extra, okay? And that's not even your house. We haven't even talked about the house yet. So these things are outside, right? So then you have, um, like I said, lighting for the walls. And remember this, plastering is not included in your wall or your house. Typically it's not. Um, you talk with your contractor. Those are the type of things you wanna ask up front. Typically plastering is separate. Uh, here is what we've learned. And so don't assume that um, it's included in the price of your wall is typically a, a whole separate process. I think they need different materials to kind of do it or whatever, but it's separate, it's not included. So that needs to be in your budget. These are things that I'm asking you guys to have conversations with your contracts, whoever your contractor may be um, about, so that you can get a good gauge of what your budget will be. Landon and I knew that plastering wasn't included, so we weren't shocked by that. You know, we've watched enough videos to know that plastering wasn't included, but I realized that a lot of people uh, don't know that, and so, again, don't want you to be shocked. So plastering of your wall, of your house, is not included in any of the other brickwork, okay? Yeah, okay. So just know that, know what type of roof uh, you may want and uh, that's gonna really come into play like especially when you start working with your um, architect and he's doing your blueprint and do you want a pitched roof kind of something we're used to seeing or do you want a hidden roof 
uh, talk to your contract about the pros and cons of each. And I, I believe that the pitch roof can be a little bit more expensive than your hidden roof. And I believe the hidden roof has its own pros and cons also. Uh, so talk about, talk to your contractor about what's best for your project, right? And your architect about what's best for your project. So think about your pitch roof versus um, your hidden roof, right? Again, I think I mentioned your CCTVs, your security. Uh, are you gonna do solar? Are you gonna be on solar uh, paneling or are you gonna be on Ghana Electric? Those are things you wanna think about too. Solar is a whole other expense, right? So uh, it's, it's a really big expense. Um, you know, it's something you wanna think about. Like, are, again, are you, you wanna have a bill every month or you wanna be off grid and have solar, okay? And so um, the gentleman that we use is with Oasis Solar. His name is Mr. Emanuel, very nice young man. Um, the day I was gonna have him on the channel, I wasn't feeling well, so I didn't get a chance to uh, get to have him on the channel, but he's a very nice, knowledgeable young man. He gave us choices. Um, he was really good, he came by the site, he kind of stood around and listened to some of the other conversations uh, we were having with other contractors to kind of gauge uh, what we will be having in the house. And so uh, through those uh, conversations, he was able to make some recommendations on what he thought was was good for our home. Very nice young man. So you guys check out his YouTube. It's called o uh, Oasis Solar and his name is Emmanuel. So check him out. Very knowledgeable young man. Think about your biodigester, right? You're going to have a biodigester or a septic tank. Okay. So um, think about the pros and cons of each one of those. Um, the gentleman who's doing our bio digester, his name is Mr. Jerry, and he is with Dream Home Biodigesters. He also has a YouTube uh, channel, so you guys check him out also. Um, yeah, so he's gonna be doing our bio digester. Um, we got a quote from him, and so he'll be installing that at some point during this building process. But think about bio digester, Septic tank, solar, Ghana electric, pitch roof, hidden roof, those types of things. Uh, yeah, think about all those things. And, and if you notice, guys, we're not even on this side of the house yet. <laughs> this is not, all of this is outside of the house, right? Right, okay. So then when you start to do what they call fixings here, let me just tell y'all. Oh, I, I forgot to mention landscaping. So landscaping too is outside of the house. And so that could be like if your yard needs to be level where they're bringing in ladder right to kind of um, smooth out your yard and make it all even and things like that. And so again, these are things um, you want to think about when you are budgeting for your home. Um, it's completely up to you, but you just kind of want to be very much aware, right? Uh, okay, so now the inside of the house. You guys, I will be completely honest with you the outside doing the outside was probably the easiest thing for me because it's just you know the, the uh, professionals they know what they're doing oh this okay yeah but on the inside we tend to be a little bit more meticulous about the inside of the house right and so it is that we are building our dream home and so we want things to look nice and we want uh, quality things. And so it's the inside, the fixings of the house um, that have cost the most, right? And that, I'm, I think that's gonna be just with any build because what I have found out is that all the brickwork is easy. It's the fixings, your windows, your doors, um, your tile, uh, doing the fittings for your kitchen, your uh, choosing your POP versus plasterboard, um, all kinds of stuff right that's um to me that's been the most labor intensive to even think about right and so that's where the money is spent on the inside of the house okay uh, also i want to mention you guys painting your house painting your wall it's expensive <laughs> I just want you guys to know it can be pretty expensive uh, so you want to budget for that um, sometimes you're not thinking about 
the paint. You just think, oh, this is the budget for my home. And those of us from the West, some, those things are included. If you go to a new build site and you are building, a lot of these things are thrown in as extras, as this, as that, are just included. It's not like that um, here, or that's not been our experience. It's not, everything, a lot of things are a la carte. It's all separate, right? And so you never want to assume that something is included. Um, just ask, always ask. Never, never, never assume. Just always ask. Um, again, make sure you get everything itemized. Uh, it doesn't matter what conversation you have. When it's time to actually perform that task, everybody won't remember what was said, okay? Including you. So make sure it's written down, okay? In detail. So then you guys, you have your fixings, you have your windows, your doors, your inside doors, and your security doors, which are your outside doors, right? So you have uh, choices of all kinds of security doors. You can do China doors, you can do Turkish doors, and you can find uh, very nice doors in, in each one of those makers. And so you want to think about those types of things, right? Um, here in Ghana, uh, they do the bars for the windows. Uh, and I admit, initially, we didn't want bars for the windows, but then we had to be realistic. Um, and so we were able to find some really nice designs for the bars for our windows. And I think it actually looks really nice. Right, so think about the bars for your windows. Again, your tile, um, the, the sinks in your bathrooms, the vanities, uh, the toilets, the taps, all that stuff is separate, right? Your kitchen appliances, uh, your cabinets, the whole build out of your, uh, of your kitchen, again. When you're building in the West, depending on if you're building a new home, that stuff is kind of included, right? You may do an upgrade on granite. You may do an upgrade on the type of wood, but your kitchen is included. Not here, not here. So it's separate. So make sure that you have budgeted for your kitchen, right? Okay, so then you decide, um, are you gonna have solar hot water or are you going to have uh, provisions made for hot water tanks in each one of your your bathrooms and your kitchen and things like that so we elected to do the solar hot water and um mr emmanuel with oasis solar he installed all of that for us as well so i really do if you guys especially if you guys are doing solar check him out again i thought he was very professional i thought that He's very knowledgeable. He, he did a great job at just giving us all kinds of, if this, then that, you know, just, I was really impressed with him and I think that you guys will be too. Okay, so yeah, that's it. You know, then you guys have the, stru the actual structure, your foundation, your walls. Uh, I, I, we've talked about your roof, pitched versus, versus hidden all the kind of stuff, the materials used for that, right? So ask your contractor these questions. What's included in the build of my wall, right? What's included in, if I have, you know, just what's included in your, in your, in your, in everything. Again, never take for granted that things are included a lot of things are a la carte here you will pay separately for a lot of things and another thing that i learned is that when you are um, dealing with your electricians and your plumbers a lot of their work is done in stages so um you may get your first estimate for that work right and then not realize that there's two more stages left but not only your electrician but your plumber. So you think maybe, okay, I paid my electrician, we're good. But as the project progresses, there will be um, other estimates coming. So you wanna make sure that you know um, what's coming, right? Um, that something's coming from your plumber. Cause you don't wanna get to the end of your budget and, and realize, uh, oh, something's coming I got two more estimates coming from the electrician so you don't want you don't want that so just be aware that um, their work is done a lot in stages and so just be aware of that so make that make sure that's in your budget okay uh, the same with the plumber make sure that 
that's in your budget. And so, yeah, you guys, um, a couple of things we learned um, in this process, and we're still learning in this process. You wanna communicate quickly and often with your contractors, with your foremans, get to, you know, uh, develop a rapport and a relationship with them, right? Um, and you wanna communicate often and quickly. I will even tell you guys, if you can be here um, at all, or as much as you can be here, because as good a job as they do uh, for you, it's, something will be misunderstood uh, by all parties, including you. So you want to be here um, as much as you can. I don't care how good your contractor is. You want to be here because uh, when things are misunderstood, most times that expense will be yours. That's just the reality of it. So if you can be here, uh, be here. Be very clear about what you want and what you don't want. Uh, you will find, what, well, I will speak for me. What I have found is that my people, as long as, as much as I love them, they're very opinionated about what looks nice and what doesn't look nice. And so you have to be able to say, no, no, I don't want that. No, you have to you, say that as, as however you need to say it because they'll be very opinionated about, oh, it doesn't look nice because they have a vision, not knowing that you have a vision also. And so everybody's vision is different, but at the end of the day, it's your house, it's your money, and you know, you do what you want to do and you do what looks nice. So yeah, I don't really wanna hear what looks nice. I, I know what looks nice. So just, just know that you know you will hear that a lot oh it doesn't look nice it won't look nice but but you want to make sure that it is communicated very clearly that you want it the way you want it okay again get things in writing very detailed and uh, and and detailed out yeah yeah so again just do what you want to do um with your home have fun with it uh, be here as much as you can. Get to know the artisans also. Um, be able to call them up yourselves and have a conversation uh, with the artisans yourselves. Um, and be able to kind of talk to them about which specifically what you want. So don't get too relaxed um, in having your home built for you, right? You always want to... Um, be present as much as possible right you want to be as vocal as much as possible um, because again when things are miscommunicated it, you it will be at your expense that's just lessons we've learned uh, people ain't gotta like it that's just what it is right and so yeah so I hope this has been um, helpful for you guys uh, just I just want to know if you're ready if, you, if you're ready financially um, if you're ready mentally because it can take a toll on you it will take a toll on you because you know you're building in a whole nother country you don't really know the best places to go um, you don't know you, you definitely almost can't go anywhere by yourself with this accent right because oh uh, it is just what it is you don't always get the the fair price right so they jack up everything on you so that can be really frustrating as well and so just know that it happens if you can have somebody go for you to help you pick out your things which really shouldn't have to be but that's just how it is sometimes so um, do that be aware of suggestive sales right would you like this this will look nice if you did this this it's gonna cost you right and, and if you're okay with that that's fine but just be aware know that right um, so yeah so yeah you guys again I hope that this was helpful uh, for you I hope that you were able to take a lot of great things from it um, I hope to see you building very soon um, if you're building in Gray City I'm excited for you I'm excited for you wherever you're building I know people who are building in Tanzania and the Gambia I'm excited for you um, 
but I'm really excited for those of us who are building in Grace City Phase 3 because that's our community, right? And so I'm excited about what's happening in the community. It's really exciting to see all of the projects coming up and people are just moving forward. Um, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be really, really nice. And so, yeah, you guys also in Grace City Phase 3, there has been an additional 30 acres open. Um, so there's more land available to you. And so if you guys would like any additional information and you'd like for myself and Landon to assist you in acquiring land at Grace City Phase 3, please do email us at thebotleysingana at gmail.com. And again, that's thebotleysingana at gmail.com. See you on the land.